Hello everyone, it is Jennifer. It is April 15th, tax day. Um, it's like 12.10 in the morning, so if you haven't done your taxes yet, you still got a couple hours. Um, at any rate, I'm making this video because I had my sinus surgery. Um, I don't know if I sound any better. Um, unfortunately, they only could do half the surgery. I got to the hospital and this is the first time that my surgeon has ever done a surgery at that particular hospital. He was doing it as a favor to me because it was the only hospital that he could operate at that accepted my insurance. So as the ENT, he was doing me a favor and I appreciate it, but he got there and um, I guess I'm, I was told that even um, during surgery, he was supposed to be doing two surgeries. He was supposed to do a septoplasty, which... Um, was to fix my deviated septum and then he was supposed to do another surgery to get rid of all the polyps and drain the sinuses and all that but I guess um during the septoplasty they didn't even have all the equipment that he needed for that and he actually had to change out of his scrubs during surgery to leave the operating room to go get things because the nurses at that particular hospital didn't know what he needed um, I've never been to that hospital before I will never go back to that hospital I had a really hard time waking up out of anesthesia I couldn't breathe when I woke up and they didn't seem to care um, they weren't very clear with their directions they would tell me one thing and then they would tell me something else so I'm not happy with that hospital and I'm really not happy because now I have to have another second surgery on June 6th to clear out the rest of my sinuses all he did was fix the deviated septum and I'm still getting congested I'm still it's still hard to breathe and I don't know maybe I'm just paranoid but my nose looks different it looks like crooked or something like higher on this side or I don't know maybe I'm just paranoid because I can't touch it and I'm it's driving me nuts that I can't like blow my nose or sneeze or clean out my nose or anything for like eight more days so it's driving me nuts and I'm paranoid I think I don't know I'm just paranoid <laughs> so excuse me I'm paranoid um but anyway so um, as far as that's concerned, I only had one of the surgeries done. I have the other one done on June 6th at an actual surgery center. And the only reason I'm able to do that is because my insurance changes as of June 1st. So five days after my insurance changes, I'm in there having another surgery. And hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, I know this one will be better. Um, the other news that I have, you know what this is? You probably can't see because it's in reverse. This is my sleep study results from December. Why has it taken me since December to get it? I can't tell you. Because I have contacted my ENT. I have contacted my family doctor who swears up and down that they don't have a copy of it, even though I've had it sent to them three different times. Um, and then I, um, during my surgery, or before my surgery on Monday, I asked him, like, do you have the results? Because I still don't have the results of my sleep study from December. So he looked at it and he said, you have sleep apnea. You wake up 26 times an hour. Um, that's not good, but I don't want you to have another sleep study until we complete all your surgery. He thought I was going to have them all that day. So he wanted me to have a sleep study done in June, but now, because my other surgery is in June, I don't know when I'm going to have the other sleep study. But um, I finally got this today after arguing with the ENT's office. I don't know what her problem was, but she wanted to argue with me about sending me the stupid results. But eventually she did fax it to me today at home. So... It's the good part of having a little mini office at home, even though I don't have a job. Um, I can get everything done that I need to have done at home. Um, but it says here that I have moderately significant obstructive sleep apnea. Um, and that because of my BMI um, and because of my prolonged sleep time, that it is... Um, I'm considered to have, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like reading this off of this thing and it's a horribly small print. Um, obesity, hyperventilation syndrome, Pickwickian syndrome, which I looked this all up and basically it just means because I'm obese that the sleep apnea is most, li most likely caused by that and um, that obviously sleep apnea can be fatal and um, that if I were to lose weight, and it does suggest weight loss surgery, that I would most likely not have this anymore. So on the one hand, it's not good news because obviously nobody wants to think 
that you stop breathing 26 times an hour. Um, nobody wants to think that. But on the other hand, um, I think this is good to take to my insurance company and say, you know, out of many of the problems that I have, here's documented proof that I have one that can be cured by this weight loss surgery if you will permit it. So um, the other thing I noticed on here, um, God, I can't read this stuff. I wish they would have sent it better. I'm only sleeping like 90 to 100 minutes at a time, which I knew that. I knew I wasn't sleeping very well. And then it says I, I woke up the whole night. I woke up 103. Um, it said a number of awakenings, 20. And then total number of arousals is 103. So I actually woke up out of my sleep 20 times to where I was opening my eyes and could see. I woke up 20 times between midnight and 6 o'clock. So in six hours, I woke up 20 times. But my body alerted me and um, shook me out of my sleep 103 times. So that's like kind of ridiculous. It's scary in a way. But like most things, I'm not going to take it seriously because um, for some reason, it's just words to me. For some reason, it's just like whatever. Um, and maybe it's because I don't know what else to do about it. I don't know. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about... Um, sorry, I just took a shower and my hair is still wet and well, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that I watched, um, a video over the weekend or maybe it was Monday when I came home by Kelly Wanda, who has lost over a hundred pounds on, um, through bariatric surgery and she has done fabulous. She's, she was beautiful before she had the surgery. She is absolutely gorgeous now. She's maintained her weight loss um, for quite some time. So she made a video talking about the things that she eats to maintain the weight loss. And as I was watching the video, although I commend her for completely obviously changing her, um, her lifestyle and completely changing what she eats. Um, I, for me, it was so intimidating because the foods that she was showing there's no way in the world that I would ever eat that stuff. And, um, I mean, post-surgery or pre-op, there's just no way that I could get myself to eat it. And I did try, um, this past time I was going to do, this, I went shopping on the 9th, so that was like six days ago. And my purpose of going shopping was to get a bunch of protein shakes and jellos and puddings and soups and broths and all that. And I was going to do the liquid diet for a month, and I lasted like maybe 18 hours, maybe a day, and I needed food. I was so hungry, um, so that wasn't good. And I did get some food, but then I decided, okay, well, instead of getting, instead of going total uh, liquid at this point, maybe I can just, you know, just not buy red meat and just not, um, like, buy turkey instead, buy ground turkey, and maybe um, not buy any snack foods so that I'm not consuming as much sugar. And if I can get rid of the sugar and I can get rid of most of the carbs and I can get rid of the red meat, maybe that alone will make me lose weight. So, um, I did buy some ground turkey and I thought I need to try this on like my favorite food to eat with regular meat and just tell myself that it tastes the same. So I made, um, homemade nachos, which is something that I love and I eat all the time. I just get some tortilla chips and um, get some cheese sauce from Ragu and <clears throat> taco meat or meat with taco seasoning and then make some nachos. Well, I made it with ground, with ground turkey and the cheese was different because they didn't have the cheese that I wanted and there is something psychologically wrong with me <laughs> because I could not eat it. I had maybe five or six bites and um, Noah, which is my ex-fiance, ex-boyfriend, love of my life, never gonna go away guy, tattooed on my hand. Um, we're just obviously just friends now, but um, he was here and I made it for both of us and he thought it was like delicious. He thought it didn't taste any different, but I, I don't know if it was just because I knew in my head that I couldn't eat it or if it I don't know what it was but he was like that's ridiculous like I finally see that you have some psychological issues when it comes with food 
and I do. If I, I just can't, I can't eat stuff that I know is good for me, and I don't know why, but it really, really bothers me. So, all this rambling is basically to say, I would like to know what you guys eat pre-op and post-op, um, because Kelly Wanda's video, although very enlightening and very encouraging, and it really highlighted how committed she is and what she's had to do for herself, and I applaud her for her outstanding success, um, I can't do that. And I don't want to have the surgery if I can't follow through with an acceptable meal plan. Um, and I really, really feel like I need the surgery. I just don't want to feel like I'm going to fail before I even begin. So if you could tell me kind of some of the things that you eat post-surgery, um, I mean, can you eat the same things that you ate before surgery, just in less amounts? Or, I mean, did you totally have to change your diet? Or, I'm just really curious. So anyway, um, I think that's about all. And um, my orientation for weight loss surgery is on the 28th, um, I think. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the 28th. Um, so that's like only 13 days from now. And I'm looking forward to it because this hospital is much better. Um, and I'm lucky that I live in the metro Detroit area where we have like seriously about eight or nine different health systems within a 45 minute drive. And that's easily, there's easily 20 hospitals within a 45 minute drive. So I'm very fortunate. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope I sound a little bit better because I can breathe a little bit better. Um, I just have not gone through the whole surgery and um, not waking up well through anesthesia kind of scared me and made me think about bariatric surgery but I need to take it one day at a time and just go like that so thanks for watching and if you have any questions comments whatever let me know and please let me know about the food stuff because I'm very very interested thanks